So I'm back today to show you how to subtract time during your earthquake unit. Earthquake unit can always cause a little bit of anxiety to some people because it deals with a little bit of math. So I want to show you today just really simply how to go through and subtract time. Time is going to be important with this unit because we're dealing with arrival times of two very important vibrations that earthquakes give off, primary and secondary. So you have P waves. They're always first, which means that they're faster. And you have the secondary waves, the S waves. They're always going to come in second, which means that they're going to be a little bit slower. That's how it's always going to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up our time to look like this. Hours, minutes, seconds. I always set my time up like this because whenever we subtract time, we got to keep everything in a nice neat column. You have to subtract hours from hours, minutes from minutes, seconds from seconds. Now, when we get into this, it's all about what are called the arrival times. So you're going to have an S wave arrival time and a P wave arrival time. So think about it. You, you arrive at school at a certain time. You arrive at the movies at a certain time. You arrive at a baseball game at a certain time. These arrival times arrive at a seismic station. If these arrival times give a seismologist, basically someone who studies earthquakes, a huge amount of information, especially when it gets into talking about how far away the earthquake is and trying to figure out the location. So let me show you how this is going to be done. And I'm going to set my time up as hours, minutes, and seconds. S wave is always on top. P wave is always on the bottom. Always. So if the S wave shows up at... Five hours, 25 minutes, and 20 seconds. The P wave has got to be earlier. You're going to notice whenever we do these subtractions, especially with regions Earth science, the hours will always be the same. You're never going to get one that overlaps the hours. Maybe in college, maybe in an upper level geology class, but here at regions Earth science, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th grade, standard regions Earth science, your math is going to be very, very simplistic. In the first couple examples, I'm going to keep very, very straightforward. So the times are, oh, the hours are always going to be the same. The times are always going to be relatively close. But the P wave time is always going to be earlier. Five hours, 23 minutes, and 10 seconds. You could put a PM or AM in there. So AM, so we'll say it's kind of in the morning here. This is when the P wave arrived at the seismic station, S wave arrived at the seismic station. Subtract them pretty standard. 10 from 20 is 10 seconds. 23 from 25 is going to be two minutes and zero hours. I always put the zero in the placeholder for the hours to keep all my columns nice and straight. This is what we call your lag time. If you show up at school at eight o'clock, your best friend shows up at 810, there's a 10 minute lag between the two of you. So think about your P wave and S wave in terms of you and a friend showing up at school or showing up at the movies. That's a two minute and 10 second lag time. Now, the reason why I put the zero in front of the, in front of the two minutes is because if you just put down 210, I don't know if that's two hours and 10 minutes or two minutes and 10 seconds. If I put the zero in the placeholder for the hour, I know that's two minutes and 10 seconds. Let me do one more example for you. S wave arrival. P wave arrival. Ten, thirty, fifty a.m. So that's the time of day. P wave, ten. Again, those hours are pretty much going to stay the same. Twenty-five, thirty, a.m. Again, straightforward subtraction. This is kind of how it's always going to be. Kind of the straightforward subtraction. 30 from 50 is 20. 25 from 30 is 5. 10 from 10 is 0. Again, lag time. That's going to help you figure out the epicenter distance. Now, I'm not going to get there yet in this video, but I'll do a couple few uh, videos about trying to figure out epicenter distance. Well, that's not how it's always going to be. It gets a little bit harder. Sometimes we have to borrow some time. S wave arrival, P wave arrival, and subtract them. 
let's say S wave arrival is 1, 50, 10 p.m. P wave arrival is 1 hour, 47 minutes, and 30 seconds. Of 47 minutes and 30 seconds p.m. So now, looks like you can subtract. A lot of kids will just kind of look at this and say, you know what, that's uh, three minutes and 20 seconds. Nope, it's not three minutes and 20 seconds. You can't do the subtraction with the seconds. Up top here, you saw the smaller number was on the bottom, bigger number was on top. Now this bigger number's on the bottom. We have to change that. So we have to borrow from the minute section. So because I like to subtract everything per column, we're gonna borrow from each column. So I'm gonna borrow one minute from the 50. That's gonna knock the 50 down to 49. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna borrow that one minute. I have to convert it to 60 seconds because now that minute is going into the seconds column. So that's gonna be converted to 60. But I already have 10 there. 60 plus 10 is 70. Now I can subtract. 30 from 70 is 40 seconds. 47 from 49 is two minutes. One from one is zero. My lag time is two minutes and 40 seconds. So you gotta be really, really careful. Take an extra 10 seconds. Put your times on a piece of paper, subtract them. Make sure you didn't make any mistakes. I'll do one more borrowing for you. wave arrival. Okay, S wave arrival, we'll say is 3, 10, 0. We'll say that's AM. So 3, 10. P wave, again, hours are pretty much going to always be the same. 3, and we'll say 40 AM. So again, we have to borrow. We've got to take, we've got to borrow the seconds you can't subtract. So we're going to borrow from the minute going to borrow one minute from the 10, knock that down to nine. That one minute I borrow is going to get converted 60 seconds. I have nothing there, so this is automatically going to be 60. Now I can subtract. 40 from 60 is 20. Six and zero. That's my lag time. Watch my other videos to show you what we do with this lag time to get the epicenter distance. So hopefully this kind of helps you out a little bit, maybe relaxes a little bit of anxiety. Make sure you check out my other earthquake videos that are going to be posted. And good luck with your earthquake unit.